This lesson is on the Air Data Computer. It is a single system which replaces the individual pressure instruments by a centralised source of pressure information in electric or electronic format. Until the 1960s or 70s, an airliner would have had, for each pilot, an airspeed indicator, an altimeter, a VSI, and a Mach meter. Additionally, there would have been a standby ASI and a standby altimeter, possibly in the flight engineer's station. Each static instrument would have had its own static line, and the pitot instruments would have had both a pitot and a static line. This would be a minimum of 15 pitot or static lines, all running from the pitot tube and static vents up to the back of each instrument. Clearly, there is a lot of duplication and, more importantly, a large network of perishable piping, which, if it failed, could introduce leaks or blockages. A neater and more reliable system emerged in the 60s with the advent of early analogue computing devices. Early air data computers needed just three inputs of information. These were pitot pressure, static pressure, and total air temperature. They also required a source of electrical power. As this device became more important, a standby power source was also incorporated. The static pressure was converted by the computer into an altitude readout and to vertical speed. From a combination of pitot and static inputs, the computer can calculate indicated airspeed. However, because this newer technology is manufactured to higher tolerances than previous direct reading instruments, instrument error is very small and what there is can be accurately measured and corrected. Position error can also be incorporated into the computation process and therefore the output is presented as calibrated airspeed in many systems. The total air temperature can be shown. But again, with a computer, this can be converted to static air temperature without the need for calculation by the aircrew. The computer now has all the information it needs to calculate true airspeed and Mach number. A later addition from the 1980s onwards was an input of angle of attack, usually called alpha. This allowed safe flight at lower speeds, particularly on the approach with no requirement to correct for the effect of changing weight as fuel was burnt. These five basic inputs of pitot, static, total air temperature, angle of attack and power are still required in today's modern air data computers. In the earliest air data computers, pitot and static pressures were passed directly down tubes from the pitot head and the static vents. This is the airspeed part of an analog air data computer. Pitot and static are passed directly to two pressure capsules. The capsules are attached to an I bar which is pivoted. Movement of the pressure capsules makes the I bar move sideways, changing its position relative to the E bar. This causes an out of balance signal to be sent to the amplifier. And then the servo motor which turns the shaft. This system has the transducers in the computer. A transducer is any device which converts a physical measurement, in this case pressure, into an electrical signal. As technology developed, it became possible to put the transducers near the pitot and static sensors and send the information electrically, thereby reducing the dependence on long lengths of piping. The total air temperature information was already in the form of an electrical signal, as it is a voltage derived from a temperature sensitive resistance. In many systems, these transducers are given the more generic term of interface units, or IFUs. With the advent of digital air data computers, a change of format was required, and so these are also often referred to as analog to digital interface units, or AD. IFUs. The transmission line now becomes a digital data buzz bar rather than an analog electrical signal. With the addition of angle of attack sensing, 
This brings us up to date with modern systems. Air data computers are usually made by specialist manufacturers or subcontractors rather than Airbus or Boeing themselves. They are therefore usually off-the-shelf items which can be fitted into many aircraft. However, each aircraft type will have its own position error for the pitot and static sensors and its own recovery factor for the temperature probe. We therefore have to have a device which may well be combined with the interface units to allow for position error and k-factor for each aircraft type. This is called a configuration module. A built-in test function, which can be abbreviated to BIT, is fitted to many types of modern computer-based instrumentation. It can also be known as built-in test equipment, or BITE. There are three main operating modes. The first is at startup. This is called power up. The second is continuous operation. A self test routine will take place about once a second during the whole of the flight. Finally, there is a maintenance bite. This allows maintenance personnel to carry out deeper fault diagnosis without the need for separate test equipment. The air data computer is used as a central source for many instruments and other systems. Older aircraft may have analog displays, even if the data is digital. They will include the airspeed and Mach number indicators, altimeters, and VSIs. More modern aircraft will have an electronic flight instrument display, or EFIS. Here you can see the electronic airspeed, altitude and VSI readings. Here you see a typical fully integrated system with our usual inputs of pitot, static, total air temperature and alpha. Another input is a detector to show whether there is any weight on the wheels. We will explain its purpose shortly. The inputs are completed with the addition of a power supply and a source of backup power. All of the air data computer outputs are passed to the flight data recorder. Temperature and true airspeed outputs go to direct reading indicators. And also for display on the EFIS. Similarly, Mach number and IAS, or more probably CAS, go to direct reading indicators. And these speeds, and also the bugged speed, go for display on the EFIS. Altitude is passed to the altimeter display and also the barometer alerter where bugged altitude can be set. The altitude is also displayed on the EFIS. A warning is sounded if a bugged altitude is exceeded. Altitude information is also passed to the height encoding transponder for air traffic control purposes. There is an output to the direct reading VSI and the same information is also fed to the EFIS. There will also be both an overspeed and an underspeed oral warning system. The stall warning system is decoupled when the aircraft is on the ground, which explains the need for the weight on wheels switch. Outputs are also fed to the three inertial reference systems. The flight control computer, and the Flight Management System, or FMS. These will be covered later in the course. So you can see that the Air Data Computer is a central source of information for many other user systems, passing the information using digital electronics, not pitot and static pipes. The Air Data Computer has many advantages over previous separate pitot static instruments. One of them is an improvement in displays. Electric or electronic instrumentation allows the manufacturer complete freedom to design new types of display which are clear and unambiguous. Instrument error can be reduced. In fact, with modern systems it is virtually eliminated. Errors due to friction and mechanical design do not apply to electronic systems. Similarly, lag is greatly reduced. Powerful servo motors can be used in the transducers and in electromechanical displays, 
and there is no lag in electronic displays. Known errors can be corrected. The configuration module corrects for position error and K factor, and the computer can calculate true airspeed and static air temperature. The air data computer becomes the central source for all systems using air data. We get a cleaner design. The use of electrically driven instruments reduces the amount of pneumatic piping behind the instrument panel to just those lines connected to the standby ASI and altimeter. This leads to space saving and easier maintenance and reduces the possibility of leaks or blockages. However, one of the most important benefits is failure warning. The outputs from the number 1 and the number 2 ADC to the captain's and the first officer's instruments can be compared automatically, and if there is more than an allowable discrepancy, there is a visual warning to the pilots. Let's summarise this lesson. In response to the problem of increasing complexity of pitot-static piping in the multi-crew aircraft of the late 50s, early analog air data computers were developed. From the 1980s onwards, these were superseded by digital air data computers, which are now fitted to all modern airliners. The basic five inputs to a modern ADC are pitot, static, total air temperature, angle of attack, and power. In the early days, the pressure data transmission lines were pitot and static tubes. Later systems used remote transducers and were sent the source data to the ADC by wire. Modern systems use digital computers and digital data transmission and include angle of attack information. A device called a configuration module allows for position error and K factor for each aircraft type. There are three types of built-in test, startup, continuous, and maintenance. We looked at the complexity of a modern air data system with its many user systems. And finally, we listed the advantages of the air data system. Improved displays, reduced instrument error, reduced lag, error correction, a central source for all user systems, a clean design for ease of maintenance and, most importantly, failure warning.